the speeding up, what you're gonna do here, that's a very similar one uh, about learning stage. Learning stage is the same. You're gonna take the sentences, yeah. each sentence is one block of the piece, and you're gonna bring it to the original tempo. Then the next day, you work two sentences of the piece, then four, then eight, till you get the whole piece. Usually <laughs> takes you three days. It's very similar. Mm -hmm. but less painful, obviously, these are technique exercises. Keep your nails short, use something sticky, and drink plenty of water, a little bit salty. That's gonna help you because if you don't do that, the timing five could be challenging to you because you're gonna start playing in timing five right from the first day. So if you look at the page 26, I'm not ready. Avoid this most <laughs> common mistake. We all have it. Don't worry. So right from the day one, you're gonna bring each sentence to timing five. Oh. Mm -hmm. So use those things, it will help you. And exercise the muscles, it will help your muscles to breathe. And exercise your torso, it will help you to feel um, secure and kind of more steady and feeling more control when you play, not to suffocate. Because it's not gonna be easy. Sorry, it's not gonna be easy. <laughs> when I started doing it for the first time, I remember I'm playing and in my mind I'm like, I know I'm playing, I know I'm looking at it, but I have no idea how it will come out from me. <laughs> There's a feeling of like a, 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 a real, you know, um, a roller coaster. It's like, I don't know how it's all going. I was going out, you know, and I was just sometimes stopping and laughing hysterically because it's crazy, you know, because you really play in a fast tempo, which you never played before, really fast. Um, the first time is going to be very special. So you might even just like, what just happened? What just happened? <laughs> you know? So the reason I ask you to play it or imagine it only in piano or forte, because it's beneficial. Forte is beneficial for warming up and piano is for speeding up. So the point of this exercise is we want to experience speed and stamina and for that, the preferable dynamics is piano. Because if you try to play these exercises in forte, you will not be able to play as fast as you could. But I really want you to feel in your mind a state of what just <laughs> happened, you know? And for that, you really want to use piano, the easiest dynamics to speed up in. Yeah, and like I said, piano with voicing, because um, if you're not using voicing, then when you're going to play scales very fast, you will always be left with a feeling of, oh, my hands never match. And your hands will not ever match 100%, but you can, as I said before, create the illusion that they match. So for scales and pitches, definitely use piano and voicing. And octaves and chords, just piano. Mm -hmm. So, the last thing, how to resolve common errors, and we're done. Again, in the, in the timing five, it will probably happen, not in timing one. When you feel that you are unable to play faster, it's page 28. No. Uh -huh. Again, this is like emergency kit. <laughs> Eight. No. Uh <-huh. laughs> so, if you feel you're unable to play faster, make sure that your fingers uh, are much closer to the key surface. You don't leave them on the keys too high. And you imagine piano more, more softly. So instead of playing this, you might start at some point playing that. High lifting of fingers and playing mezzo piano, let's say. And these are the things that will hold you back from your speeding up. So, if you feel stiffness in hands, like I said, improve phrasing. Maybe you're lacking of breathing, you're playing everything on the same level of energy. Lighten your uh -huh. touch by improving the amplitude of elbow motion. Again, maybe your elbow motion is sort of... Um, sometimes when elbow motion is not big enough, 
you end up having a um, wrong angle over here and it feels like uh -huh. you're the burden of the entire arm is on this part of your hand. Um, so it shouldn't be like that, right? So make sure that your elbow is leading the way. If you miss the note, improve the speed and accuracy in elbow and torso motion, but also intensify musical speech of the interval towards the missing note. Towards uh -huh. the missing note. That is also very important because many times you we will work about uh, on that in the pieces. How do you approach difficult fragments? You know, let's say you're missing the nose here. Most of the time when you ask a student, where exactly did you miss the note? They will not know. They know somewhere mm -hmm. there, but not exactly. <laughs> it's too scary. I don't want to go there to analyze where exactly I missed it because actually I know I'm not going to be able to fix it, you know, anyway. <laughs> so it's very important, especially in arpeggios, if you feel you miss a note, stop. Understand. Don't think it was an accident. It's never an accident. Uh -huh. You will know nothing ever is an accident. <laughs> it's an opportunity for you to learn something and incorporate something new in that particular moment of your playing. It's never yeah. an accident. We will talk about this in the wedding stage of you know practicing the piece. So if you miss the note. <laughs> Okay, I miss towards my pinky, so I need to intonate the fourth with musical speech more prominently, so I could prepare my muscle to that particular distance. Play it a few times in slow tempo, faster, faster, and then play again. Uh -huh. Very smart about miss notes, it's never an accident. Flying fingers! <laughs> you know what I mean. They just stop. Or ah, fingers that don't. You can't. Do ah, uh -huh. they, they just don't go <laughs> in. They just, they're just uh -huh. not there. Just, they just like switching off. Done. <laughs> so, uh -huh. for that, I suggest to come back to warm up exercises playing on forte. Remember what I told you, um, the, the, the story in the previous lesson, that my schoolmate, she said, oh, for this, you know, winter wind etude, just play slow and loud. This is when people start playing this. These are your flying fingers. And then when you come back, and playing loud, you establish the correct sensations and you're there again. So when you have flying fingers, just stop. And play maybe once forte legato, and then also I suggest use more of you know tacky things on your fingers, more orange juice or something that will help the contact. Yeah. Mm. Wooden fingers. <sighs> Wooden fingers is spasmatic fingers. When you this is what I was saying. When you play too much and you don't rest, first you start you will feel spasmatic here. Wooden. And then eventually you will start feeling here. They just stop moving. Um, for that, take a minute, rest, make a windmill exercise to bring blood to the muscles. Um, and generally, yes, exercise your arm muscles because that uh, helps the stamina. And leave on a certain rhythm. Slow down and intensify intonation of musical speech in the interval that is played faster. Okay, well, if you sometimes repeat many, many times, let's say you play 30 times in a very fast tempo, this sentence. But instead of this, you start a sort of feeling it goes too fast between three and four. Again, find exactly where it is too fast and intensify the distance by including musical speech. Maybe play a few times slower. Really feel that second with your musical speech. That prepares your fourth finger. And then you play again. You feel it much more prominent and you're able to control it. And the last thing, I think my iPad went off, but I think I, <laughs> I wrote, if, if, if everything falling apart, 
Yeah. I remember the last time. What's going Stop on? Stop and come back tomorrow. Exactly. Sometimes it just <laughs> doesn't work. And that means forget it, let go, give it a good night's <laughs> sleep for subconscious to process some information. Maybe there is just too much, too crowded, and you need some space, which will be unloaded through your night's sleep. And then come back tomorrow and you might feel better. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Good. Why I find it important that you structure in your mind what you do first. You know, okay, in my first couple of days or whatever you want to take those five hours, you can break it into three days. But all together, I'm going to practice now each sentence, which are going to be 14 sentences, 14 blocks in the scale. Each one of them will take me around 20 minutes. And each one of them I will play in timing one, two, three, four, and five. And I always say, please remind yourself from time to time to double check that you're still playing in timing one. You don't play with a metronome, like I said, you definitely just use it to establish the tempo to make sure you practice in the same timing that you practiced yesterday. But sometimes after 10 repetitions, you might lose a sense of the same tempo. So just come back and remind yourself, uh -huh, this is my timing. Usually you go faster, you know, so don't use metronome, but remind from time to time after some repetitions, the tempo. That's very, very important. And um, yeah, you just follow everything. It is important that first you play in this tempo in your mind before you play. But um, if you don't feel comfortable in the timing, don't go faster. When you feel it's really, it's really that quietly in your mind, easily comfortable about just playing it in your mind first in this tempo. Then you feel that while playing, you're not looking at your hands and go like, what the fuck is happening? But you actually know exactly what's happening. That means you're ready to move on to the next timing, you know? It's a little bit different because before we were saying that our pulse is sort of matching the beat of our timing, right? If we have two pulses, we try to feel them in the calm timing one, right? Here's a little bit different because of the technical aspect of this exercise. So basically, in other words, for the scales, three beats, ta-ta-ta, will be one uh, beat, 130 BPM. So if the beat... In your mind, you play... Dun 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 Obviously, you go from timing one, two, three, four, five, and it's the end. It's 90 BPM, and every beat is, let's say, each of them you're gonna feel mm -hmm. with three passes inside. Strongest. But the beauty of that is when inside you will feel that, that will trigger your elbow movement. And so, when every time ta 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 you will have little impulses in your elbow. And as a result, they will lead your forearm. So to summarize, for example, in, in scales, each timing, each bit of the timing will have Three beats, right? Uh, each BPM has a uh, three beats. In the arpeggios are two. In arpeggios, two exactly. So I say for octaves and chords as well, 
1 ppm is well one bit is equal to one measure and we see that in one measure we have three pulses da 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 so and the chords let's take a look same like our pinches again one beat is equal to one measure Look at the measure, we have two pulses there, one stronger, one lighter. Dun, 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 dun. One beat, another beat, another beat. But yeah, to summarize, so scales, octaves, three pulses inside one beat and arpeggios and chords too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. C major up as one sentence, C major down as second sentences, D major up, third sentence, D major down, four. so altogether 14 blocks of sentences. And because it's a short one, I say somewhere, you know, when you're going to play the whole scale, the whole routine, in timing five, you can only play maybe eight times because your hands cannot take more with a certain routine and breathing in between. Because just playing once, the whole scale in time in five, the whole routine through all the keys will make you feel exhausted in your hands. You will feel in the beginning your hands are like this. So you have to use a certain routine and you will be probably be able to play maybe only eight times. But when you just were talking about one sentence, I remember playing it 50 times. I just played, exhale, played, exhale. So most of the repetitions will be in timing four and five. Just to say, just don't stack on timing one and two or three for more than two, three times. Awesome. When you've done that over the course of two, three days, then you go to the next line, you see two and a half hours. Now you take two sentences, two sentences equal to one key. On each block again, you will spend 20 minutes. Why? Because it's going to be a little bit easier. It's not going to be 40, you see, I'm going down in time. <laughs> because you practice before each sentence very well, so it's going to be a little bit easier. Maybe you don't have to repeat it in timing four and five, 50 times, maybe only 10. One and a half hour, four sentences, meaning two keys, C major and D major together. Again, you know you will have three blocks of those four sentences. Uh -huh. It's gonna be probably C and D, then E and F, and then G, A, B. It might have three sentences in it, but it's six sentences, but you'll get it. And the last day, uh, one and a half hours, two blocks by eight sentences, and then the whole routine. So this one I write when you're going to play in the last um, timings, the whole routine or by eight sentences, here you have to really pay attention not to overplay your hands because here there is a danger to hurt your hands. And that's why I write after three repetitions, make a windmill exercise to release any burning sensations on the top of your forearm. These parts right. over here will feel like stone, feel like Muscle spasmatic, you will feel spasms. So, oh. mm -hmm. what is important from my experience, when it's gonna start happening, don't say something is wrong with me. Just know it's a normal part of the progress, you're not doing anything wrong. And make sure that basically the way it goes, you will probably play only eight times and you play once, then you put your hands down, you exhale, and with exhalation, you really feel like blood coming back to your fingertips. Then inhale again, slowly exhale again, slow down your heart, and inhale again, and slow exhale. Then play again. Do it again. 
After two repetitions, then stand up, do a windmill exercise, as I was showing in the video. Uh, I, I Be gentle with your remember. shoulder. Yes. Then come back again, then play again two times with the breathing in between. Then stand up again, do windmill exercise again. If you don't stick with this healthy routine, then what will happen is that after two or three repetitions in a row without a proper relaxation, you will start feeling bad. As a result, you will start losing control in your fingers. You will not be able to properly play everything clear or fast. And the worst thing, the idea will come to your mind. Something is wrong with my hands. I'm not a good pianist. Something is wrong with my technique. That what we want to escape. So stick with the healthy routine while accelerating in this last step when you need to play by eight sentences or the whole routine. These are again all small tricks that you would only appreciate it if you've gone through all the timings and you're practicing in timing four. So I'm giving it to you as a gift of someone who has suffered through it. So <laughs> you might want to include these tips right from the beginning of timing one when you do it. So focus on the fast elbow motion, the first, third and fifth notes, position change notes, especially when playing a descending scale. From my experience, when, when I go up, I can still feel my elbows going up all right, but when I go down, especially on the last octaves, my tension just stops. So pay attention here, but pay even more attention when you go down so you finish it. The problem, start is never a problem, huh? it's to finish. So usually at the end of each scale, it's, there is always a problem, deficiency of attention. And another thing, bullet point, focus on intonating less prominent phrases more lightly to release tension in the hands and more prominent phrases heavier to better control your fingers. You will start appreciating this breathing technique, the art of breathing, we talked about this in phrasing. But now you're yeah. actually going to put it into the practice and you will actually experience what you know in theory that when um, you will also have tendency to suffocate in your muscles if you don't make a good contrast between heavier phrases and lighter phrases. So when you go on right away too much, you know. <laughs> the same level of energy you will feel bad but if you know this is less and just when you say less you will uh -huh. feel fingers just go by themselves it's sort of less phrase feels more passive fingers play passive passive and it gives this um, ebb and flow to the energy. Yeah. If in scales, the challenge is to keep stamina and make play together, then in arpeggios, it's more about accuracy because now we're introducing the leaves, you know, like third leaves. You don't want to play like this, right? <laughs> For that, remember, we're using musical speech. So it's a good yeah. way here to start experiencing how you can introduce musical speech to control the accuracy. In this case, I intonate the third, the, I intonate the third here, but the fourth here uh -huh. also, because this is difficult also. Mm. So it's actually uh, uh, the third and the fourth. It so could it's be like that. right away. Yes, it could be when you go up, it could be four, three, four, three, uh -huh. four, three, and down three, four, three, four, three, four. Uh -huh. Yeah, the dangerous parts, unsafe parts are around your thumb. So control it right away with your musical speech. And then again, you're just simply gonna speed it, speed it up and you, you're less likely to miss the note. 
And the second bullet point in both directions pay particular attention to the last octave. So here, for some reason, elbows and musical speech of intonation, because it just disappears, because we probably feel like, okay, we've done it. We start singing a new uh -huh. arpeggio and we're losing attention and all the time I was just missing at that last octave. Playing everything clear? You know? uh -huh. In octaves, same principle. As you can see, we only use timing one, one and a half and timing two. Timing two is going to be our fastest timing. When you go up, really feel that this are leading the way, these fingers are leading the way, especially your thumb. When you go down, this leading the way, especially your thumb. So, I don't know how to explain what I'm feeling exactly, but it, I think it's intention. I have an intention to feel, like teachers would say, hold on to those fingers. And when I go down, it's lower. And somehow I find if I put more attention to my thumb when I go up and thumb when I go down, I feel more stable. You basically don't close your hand. Yeah, because we also stop making all the rows. When we're gonna speed up, remember, playing a little bit faster, everything becomes more elliptical, the reach doesn't go down that much. And when we're gonna play very fast, everything will be just one line. But we're gonna have our own favorite ghost sensations inside. We will feel that the yeah. wrist is breathing as a result of making those circles in the beginning. Okay, another tip for octaves somehow. When you go up here with the roll, Pay additional attention to the fast elbow motion in your right hand. And when you go down, pay to the left hand. And also, if you want for additional accuracy, because it's also jumps and it's not always octaves, it's gonna be octave, octave seven, octave, octave seven. Uh -huh. So you might wanna intonate also at least. The last octave, this is octave, but this is seventh. This is octave, and this is seventh. And you know, when you intonate octave, move your right hand elbow fast. When you intonate seventh, move your left hand elbow very fast. <laughs>